Hello everyone. Today we're going to be talking about mass dilation. We've learned already about time dilation and indeed length contraction. But mass dilation has the advantage is of uh, the fact that it's one of the events that we can regularly observe in things like particle accelerators. And so in these large machines that accelerate tiny particles to almost the speed of light, we can notice mass dilation as they move very quickly. So, how do we get to mass dilation? We start off with momentum, right? Because momentum is a quantity that depends on velocity and it depends on mass, right? So it seems a good way to tie in. Now we know that momentum is conserved in collisions, right? It turns out that even if we go down to a very, very small scale and we look at individual atoms, we can still see momentum being conserved, no matter how fast they're moving. So we're going to assume for the moment that the conservation of momentum uh, will always remain the same, even if we're traveling at relativistic speeds, right? Now, according to the principle of relativity, the laws of, phys the laws of physics cannot change depending on how fast you're going, right? You can't uh, see a physical law like conservation of momentum be violated just because you're moving fast. So what this means uh, is that if we notice anything odd happening to conservation of momentum, we're going to have to uh, change how we think about momentum. So uh, to demonstrate a, uh, a little example of how that momentum can change, we're going to be doing a thought experiment. Except we're not going to be using a very fast moving train we're going to be using a collision between two spacecraft. Just because this experiment is a little hard to think of if we only use trains. So, here we have a short animation showing us two spacecraft coming close to each other and colliding. Right? So, we say that the spacecraft are of equal mass and they're approaching each other at the same speed. Right? And we can see that they're rebounding a little bit afterwards. Now, when they collide, we can see that they start moving away from our line in the middle. Right? So it means that after the collision, each one of them has a component of motion in the y direction. And of course, if we conserve momentum, then the component of motion will have to be the same for both we can say that it's 10 meters per second. Right? Uh, we can say that uh, the, the collision doesn't affect their direction in the x direction very much. Right? So we can say that their velocity in the x direction is about the same. Make sense? We can see that their velocity in that direction isn't really changing very much, especially if they only gain that amount of speed each way. Now, let's suppose that instead of looking at it from this point of view, where the ships are moving toward each other at equal speed, we look at it from the point of view of one of the ships. Now this means that we're going to be starting to travel at relativistic speeds instead of uh, instead of uh, being stationary. What this means though is that our definitions of meters and seconds are going to change. So we'll see what happens to these speeds going up and down, shall we? So let's go into the frame of reference of the bottom spaceship. So now, as you can see, we start off as stationary. Now, if we look at what the first observer saw when the spaceships collided, we know that after the collision, we're moving down at 10 meters per second. Right? This makes sense. Uh, we can see that the x velocity of this moving spacecraft is going to stay around the same. 
So we've got momentum conserved in this direction. It starts off high to the right, ends up high to the right. But how fast will this be moving upward, given that we know about length contraction and time dilation? Well, we don't need to worry about length contraction. Sure, we're moving upward, but we're moving upward at such a slow speed, probably, that we don't need to worry too much about uh, the distance changing. What we do need to worry about is the time changing. Because now that we're inside this frame of reference, our seconds are going to be a different length to the first frame of reference. So if the first frame of reference says that this ship is going up at 10 meters per second, how fast is it actually going up? Well, we can use time dilation, right? So if the observer is moving at 0.6 C relative to us, then one of their seconds turns into 1.25 seconds. So this ship isn't moving up at 10 meters per second, it's moving up at 10 meters per 1.25 seconds. And of course, 10 divided by 1.25 gives us 8 meters per second. Hello, now we have a problem. We've said that the x momentum is conserved, right? Because that pretty much doesn't change. But now, we've got two spaceships of equal mass. One's going down at 10 meters per second. One's going up at only 8 meters per second. So it looks like our momentum has changed. So how do we explain this if we still want to keep conservation of momentum? Well, we can't change the velocity. But what else does momentum depend on? That's right, mass. 